Good morning. It is the start of a new reading week. Of course, we are at work. Yes, I got rained on again. <laughs> Forgot my umbrella here. Um, silly, silly me. What are we reading this week? Um, it's kind of been all over the place uh, for two reasons. Reason number one, I Charlie and I decided that this week we would give each other books to read. So he, of course, gave me uh, a sci-fi book because there was no way I was reading a 600-plus history book. No, thank you. I will pass. Um, <laughs> like, no hate to history books. I just wish they were, like, a tad bit shorter and a tad less dull and, like, dense. So, yeah, he gave me Babel 17th by... What is the author's first name? His last name is Delaney. Samuel? Samuel Delaney? I hope I'm right. Uh, I am really enjoying it, actually. I do like to dabble in sci-fi here and there. He understood the assignment, however, because the main character in the story is an Asian woman who is a poet, and she's the only one that can decipher this language that enemies are trying to use against um, the Alliance is this other group of people she's the only one that can decipher it so it deals with language and obviously in space <laughs> in a foreign world uh and i'm really enjoying it i'm like 100 pages in it's quite a short novella you could say anywho i will discuss babel 17 later because <laughs> that's not what i'm reading right now um Charlie's very particular about his early edition sci-fi novels, but rightfully so. So uh, we've decided, and by we, I mean he very politely asked me <laughs> if I could read that book at home because I am known for not being the most careful with my books, which I hate to admit it um, because I took it to work a couple times and I did a little bit of damage. I know, horrible. So anyways, that's what I'm reading at home. And obviously I needed some reading material yesterday. So I brought with me The Heart, the Dry Heart by Natalia Ginsburg. And I've been really curious to read some of her work. But this copy is extra special because maybe I haven't discussed her with you before. But the owner of the bakery close to my work, which I do remember talking about because I love their bread, um, the owner of the bakery and I became besties <laughs> this summer because um, she was a customer and I noticed right away that we had identical reading taste. Uh, granted, she's much older than me and much more well-read, so it makes our conversations all the more stimulating and exciting and fun. Anyways, um, she came by and dropped off three books for me, one of them being for Charlie. Um, but it, also one of them was, uh, the dry heart and she said I would really enjoy it and she was not wrong. I'm only 40 pages in, but brain is already just blown into and shattered into a million pieces. I mean, the first paragraph, uh, itself was just like, well, I gotta keep reading, <laughs> I gotta keep reading. Um, she shoots her husband right here. I mean, come on say no more can't wait to finish it and discuss i think i'm gonna try and do like an actual sit down review we'll see how it goes i'm gonna channel alex book reviewing energy and hopefully sound eloquent and can bring something to the conversation but uh yes yeah, so i have this but this is a very short novella i think it's only 80 something pages so uh, I brought with me Piranesi. Yes, we are going to dabble. It's finally my turn after waiting uh, for like 5 million people to read this before me. It's finally my turn. Picked it up from the library. So here we are. Uh, this is my other reading material for the week. I'm very excited because as we know, this could be a hit or miss for me. I don't know how I'm going to feel. We're going to find out together. If you're wondering, I gave Charlie Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. Is anyone surprised? The answer is no. <laughs> I'm so intrigued to see what he's gonna think. 
um, his opinions about the story, the characters, how it's written. Can't wait to discuss. So granted, I have tried to film a video with Charles and it did not work for us. He was just a little awkward boy, shy boy, which is okay because not everybody likes to speak to themselves and then post it on the internet. Perfectly fine. So if he's feeling up to it, perhaps we'll get him on, on the tube and he can share his thoughts on open water. So we have finished The Dry Heart by Natalia Ginsburg. And wow, this was really, really good. I'm gonna, like I said, reserve my thoughts, but completely blown away by the writing. I mentally highlighted a few sentences in here because they were just so beautiful. Crazy good book made me feel a lot of things, evoked a lot of emotions within me <laughs> in only just 88 pages. So mad props will not be the last I read of Natalia Ginsburg, guaranteed. Anyways, um, I'm literally like five pages into Piranesi and I'm already like WTF period. <laughs> you just hear this, the beginning uh, sentence. Entry for the first day of the fifth month in the year the albatross came to the south southwestern halls. Hello? Excuse me? <laughs> like, okay, I moved past that. I'm like, all right, whatever. This, I'm sure we'll get answers. Flip the page. And I realized that the weirdest words are capitalized. And you're like, Ignacio, what do you mean? Just wait. Last came the tide capitalized, from the northern halls, both capitalized. It hurtled itself up the middle staircase, capitalized, filing the vestibule, capitalized, with an explosion of glitter, ice white, foam, capitalized. I was drenched and blinded. When I could see again, waters, capitalized, were cascading down the statues, capitalized. I'm not going to go on because I'm getting annoying at this point, but you understand my point. I'm just like, interesting choice. I don't really understand uh, the need for these uh, random capitalizations, but we'll look past it. I feel like obviously people and perhaps I too will get into the rhythm and these things will not be something I'm actively thinking about. But since this is the second page, I'm like, what is this? Like, what's going on? <laughs> so I'm incredibly lost already. Obviously, things will start to make sense uh, after a few pages. But uh, yeah, initial thoughts, I'm like, okay, this is way more bizarre and odd than I had anticipated. But I am up for the challenge. I am ready to keep going and see what this book has in store for me. Because it's obviously going to be a trippy-ass read. <laughs> Hello cuties, welcome. Um, it's been a few days since we last spoke. Lots has happened. On a grand scale, uh, the whole province is experiencing immense uh, rainfall that has caused really devastating floods. Um, actually parts of the interior of the province are completely isolated. The Floods have destroyed uh, the highways and communities have had to evacuate. So things are not pretty. Um, so that has been pretty devastating uh, to read and know some uh, friends that have been in scary situations uh, due to what's been going on. So as if the climate crisis wasn't already on my mind and something I think about on a daily basis now, um, it's even more of what my uh, I've been consumed by. But anyways, um, on a personal level, <laughs> things have been good. Uh, I have taken on a new hobby, if you will. Um, it's been bringing me a lot of joy. I have been uh, doing yoga. Uh, it's something I've been wanting to get active, be active again and move my body and feel strong uh, for quite some time now. And ever since uh, COVID, I've just kind of let that go. So it was super nice to find a brand new yoga studio that I just really vibed with. Um, I've done 
two or three classes i've done a two power yogas but the guy who's teaching it lovely person i get such great energy from them but they do ashtanga vinyasa that rings a bell to any yogis out there that's what i've been doing and it's super challenging and makes me feel so good and oh, it was i loved the two classes i've done with the same instructor and then i did a um, candlelight hatha which was also super calming and centering and very different vibe but I enjoyed both and today I'm doing yin and meditation at 5 30 after work so anyways yeah that's what I've been doing I've just been like running to class after work um, but it's been super super uh, good and it's been really great for me physically mentally it's just been awesome so anyways, yes, that's been great. I finished Babel 17th, which I really enjoyed. That was our sci-fi pick for the week. I say that as if like every week I read sci-fi, but this week Charlie and I picked books for one another. And so he picked that one and I gave him Open Water, which he finished and thoroughly enjoyed. Maybe I'll get him to talk about it. So it was actually nice to read uh, The Idiot and Babel 17 because they both center around the importance of language and linguistics and how the language that you've been taught informs the way that you look and interpret the world around you. And I really liked the conversations that um, I read in Babel 17 in regards to that as well as The Idiot. So it was kind of a nice they're very different books, obviously, but they had that in common and it was just nice to transition from one to the other. Um, so yeah, that was very good. And I'm still reading Piranesi. So what, that's where we're at. I've caught you all up. <laughs> so let's have a good work day and get some reading done. Woo! Okay, let's do a little Piranesi update, shall we? I am on page 43 and to tell you the truth, not much has happened. Um, all I can tell you thus far is the main voice is this um, man who is inside this house that goes on forever, it feels like, um, or a labyrinth might be a better name. And inside uh, this house, there's various different uh, rooms, all full of statues, and there seems to be like an ocean inside the house because a lot of rooms are either flooded or he talks a lot about the tides and him keeping track of the tides. So for the past 40-ish pages, all I can tell you is that this man is describing very lengthily um, the rooms and his daily routine and who else inhabits this house uh which seems to be just him and another person who he calls the other and this uh albatross or these two birds and other birds and that seems to be more or less it um he writes in these journals and this is what this book is intended to be like his journal entries hence why every chapter starts off with entry for the 15th day of the 16th month, blah, 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 which by the way, I have stopped reading and I hope it's not important because I just like see it and I just like skip over it and just start reading <laughs> because it's awfully repetitive and kind of annoying to keep reading that. Oops. So I hope that's not like a huge part of the plot or story that I'm supposed to be focusing on because I am just dismissing it. <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot of beautiful descriptions um this place sounds very strange and i'm wondering like is this gonna be like a social experiment like there two humans are put into this weird house and it's like a simulation and then there's like scientists or i like the squid game kind of situation when there's where where there's people um surveilling you and using this either to gather data for entertainment like or is this supposed to just be like a fictional like surrealist world i don't know can't tell you but we're gonna find out i guess it is a little tedious like i want something to happen and i just keep on reading about these birds and um the human giving birds uh some of his dried up seaweed also obviously it's like a very strange landscape to inhabit and living life in said conditions is tough. So our guy here is struggling. Things are not easy for him. He needs to ration out his food. He needs to go to different halls and rooms to fish. Others are 
to the tides are too intense for him to go in the water. He has to dry seaweed. Like it's a whole thing, you know? So it's, it's hard for homeboy here. Um, anyways, and his name is Piranesi. Did I say that already? Yeah. The other has named him Piranesi and Piranesi is the main voice of the book. That is all I can tell you thus far. We shall keep at it. Okay. We have reached the hundred point mark and wait, let me pause my jazz background. Um, and things are getting interesting. My brain is working. I am actively trying to piece together the little hints and information and <laughs> trying to solve the mystery. What I can say without spoiling is um, through Piranesi's journey and cataloging and um, interactions with the other, the other person that I mentioned that um, inhabits this house or world, um, <clears throat> we are given more uh, information in regards to this, this labyrinth, essentially. And I'm starting to realize that Piranesi has this naivete about him that he takes everything like at face value and he's very preoccupied with cataloging everything and yet not preoccupying himself with being like critical or uh, skeptical about the world and the context in which he finds himself in. Like we don't really hear him like go stir crazy or question why he's in a house and there's like tides and weird rooms and all these statues everywhere, right? So he's not, um, we don't hear that. He just takes everything at face value and continues on um, cataloging his uh, different sculptures that he sees and continues to collect his seaweed and yada yada. But us as the, as the reader, we start to then trust what he says, obviously, because he's a dependable, lovely human being. But us as the readers, we're trying to figure out, okay, like what is really going on here? Like what is this house that we find ourselves in? Who is this other, like, you know, poor Pyrenees, he's a little naive. Homeboy is not trying to you know, solve the mystery of this house like we are. So yeah, I really enjoy it when uh, books, like plot driven books, which granted, I don't read a lot of, but um, when they make you work, like you have to pay attention. Like you have to be an active reader. And, and I like when my, like I, I've now said a five million times, but when your brain's working and trying to um, not miss any potential hints or subtleties that are woven into the text. Um, everything's happening at a really nice pace, I must say. Uh, at first, like the first like few pages, like the first 30 pages, I thought it was like a little bit, not boring, but it was just like tedious because it was just a constant explanation of the world. But granted, obviously when you're dealing with like fantasy or science fiction, it's important to do some like world building for obvious reasons. Um, so I think I may have been a little bit too harsh, but um, I'm liking it now. I <laughs> think too, uh, this book benefits from having like several hours to spend on it and like sit down and really get into the flow of things. Because like I said, I started today like on page 40 and I've just been like on and off uh, reading today and I'm just very enthralled and captivated and excited to keep reading. And like I said, solve whatever this mystery that's going on so yes i am i'm liking it we shall continue <laughs> that's my update 100 page update <laughs>
tried and not succeeded to get back into Canada three times. Um, our COVID test didn't come back on time, so we had to postpone our initial um, departure. And then we rebooked our flight and uh, our COVID test finally came back, our test results. And then we were two hours outside of the 72 hour window. So then those tests were invalid. So now we are now um, attempting our third time. We got another COVID test. We have rebooked our flight for tomorrow. So it has been a lot, but we are very privileged and thankful to have like family here to spend uh, some more time here with Charlie's family. So, but anyways, we are here for book content. Um, and I am happy to report that we actually, it's been, it's been a minute because I finished Piranesi and I'm already halfway through another book, but I finished Piranesi on my way here and I freaking loved it. That book was so sweet. Piranesi is such a tender, main character and it's honestly kind of nice to hear from the perspective of such a lovely gentle sweet character because it's often not really what i read <laughs> like the main character is like oftentimes not like the most likable of humans so this was kind of a nice change and the story itself was so innovative and unique i had a similar reading experience to when I was reading Freshwater in the sense that the way that the story is told and how the author comes to understand the characters and the world that we find ourselves in is done in such a beautiful, subtle way um, that it makes the reading experience just so enjoyable. And like, I think I've already mentioned already, but the pace of the uh, book is so, it's just right. Like you're constantly trying to figure out and um like be an active reader but the pacing of it all is just done so delicately and so intentionally that it's just beautiful and i don't want to spoil it so i don't think i'm going to go into the intricacies of what happens in the um 100 pages after uh the like initial first 100 i think the book is like 245 uh, pages. So the first hundred I kind of shared, but I don't think I spoiled anything, but I don't think I'm going to share anything beyond that point. But what I will say is if you like the show, and this is like kind of niche, I don't think this show is like massively popular, but I freaking loved it. All I'm going to say is that if you liked the OA, you're going to love this book. And if you like any of that heady, like multi-dimensional, um, kind of thing I think this is honestly the book for you and it was super unexpected and uh, not at all where I saw the book going so that was a pleasant surprise and another interesting thing that the book subliminally touches on and wants the reader to ponder is not only like um, ideas around personhood and uh, understanding yourself but also about the importance of the natural world around us and kind of going back to how things used to be <laughs> for, I'm, I'm like very much simplifying things here, but I just really liked what the author was trying to do in terms of connecting us back to the natural world and the environment and living so closely and so in tune uh, with the natural world around us. I think that was like a, like I said, a subliminal theme um, that the book touches on that I really, really liked, but yeah, could not recommend that book more. And I hope that my review and discussion around it has not spoiled it in any way, because I think that's what makes this book so special, um, was that I went into it not knowing very much if, if, if anything at all, uh, which made it so much more special when I finally understood and captured what it was that the author was trying to do as well as what was going on like in the story itself. So if you want something different, experimental, that's going to keep you on your toes and wanting to keep reading and understanding this character in the world. Like I said, if you liked the OA, like go and buy this book or get it out of the library as soon as you can. Cause I think you're going to be in, um, it'll be a, it'll be a treat for you. So yeah, that is, I kind of messed up my uh, reading because I only brought one book and I should have known my 
moody self would not be down to read that book and that's the only other book apart from Piranesi that I brought um it's called happy hour just wasn't feeling it I read like the first chapter and I was like mm, it's not my vibe but it was perfect because there is a lovely bookstore if you are in the Tucson area you probably already know this place so more like if you are visiting the Tucson area you should check out um this bookstore called Antigone it's so darling in there and I really appreciate how intentional they are when it comes to the selection of books that they have because nearly every single book has such a beautifully um, explained review or description of the book. Um, so ev almost like I said, every book has a little slip uh, with a staff mem member's name and their opinion um, of the book. So anyways, I picked one up there and it was just what I was in the mood for. So less independent bookstores that's also a thing that I love doing when I'm traveling is like go to that area's like little bookstores and see what I can find and support them so that was awesome so Antigone I will be back <laughs> um I think I also said that I would try and review uh The Dry Heart by Natalie Ginsburg, which I think I, I briefly touched on but not not a lot and um, that was a really powerful tiny that I read this month that I highly encourage you to pick up because I think it's such a great example of how impactful like a tiny like less than 100 page novel or novella I guess can be. Uh, that book we're following a, a character who is disillusioned with her marriage and um, how that partnership has unfolded and she feels not fulfilled at all there's a huge gap in their communication and understanding each other and um, that leads him to actually kill him and this is not a spoiler because we under we know that she the book kind of goes in like retrospective or in retroactively in terms of it starts off where we're going to end the, the novel. It goes in like a circular fashion. So we know that she shot this man like after the first like paragraph of the book. So um, Natalia Ginsburg writes in such a simplistic, and I don't want to say simplistic as, as in a bad thing. It's very just sharp and crisp. And um, yeah, the way that she writes is so direct, but it is so good in setting the tone like getting you into that woman's psyche and uh understanding her motives and the way that she perceives the world and the tough hand that she's been dealt um in such a smart fashion but with such simplistic language and like I said I don't mean that in a bad way at all I think it's even more impressive that she can such set such a distinct tone and voice in such few pages so that book was absolutely incredible I also recommend you to pick that one up um, because you really get wrapped up in the story and uh, it was great I loved it so anyways those are all of my bookish updates uh, <laughs> I feel like this uh, vlog is gonna be very jumbly and confusing but I just didn't do very much filming while I was here so I'll see how I can put all of this together, but I hope you enjoyed this very brief. Um, maybe it's not gonna be so brief, actually. Who knows? I hope you enjoyed this uh, vlog and I will see you all very soon.